Hey guys, I'm going to be going over the embryological development of the central nervous system and we're going to be going over it in a way so it's very simple and you fully understand it by the end of it. We're going to go through it step by step. Don't let anything that's written up there alarm you at the moment. We'll go through it slowly and by the end of it, I promise you'll understand what's going on. So, as with any sort of discussion on embryology, we'll start at the beginning with fertilization. So a sperm fertilizes an egg and you'll have a blastula. The blastula is a sphere of cells with a liquid filled center and that will move down through the uterine tubes into the uterus and implant on the uterine wall. Now once it implants on the uterine wall, we'll have the development of the three germ layers. The ectoderm, the mesoderm and the endoderm. And I've all already labeled everything for you. So, if you don't know anything, you have to know, know this. Three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. That's the most important thing so far. So, the ectoderm, that'll become your epidermis, so your skin, and also will become your central nervous system. The mesoderm is actually made up of three parts. So you have the paraxial mesoderm, which, is, which becomes somites, which are muscles. The intermediate mesoderm, that'll become your gonads or kidneys. And then we have the lateral plates. Those will become things like circulation, your heart, and the endoderm, of course, that will become uh, your uh, intestines. So don't let the pictures here alarm you. It's just step one, step two, step three, and step four. Four moments, four snapshots, four cross-sections of the embryo in time. So what happens is everything begins, if we're going to talk about the brain now, everything begins with the notochord. So the notochord, if you want to know the embryological development of the notochord, um, we can get that PhD another day. We're just going to focus on the brain for now. So the notochord actually the, uh, in, invokes the overlying ectoderm to thicken and develop into neuroectoderm or the neural plate. Now this neural plate, that thickened ectoderm, that will become your central nervous system. So right here is your central nervous system in its early days. That's your central nervous system. So another snapshot in time, you'll have the lateral edges of the neural plate folding, forming this neural fold. And if we keep going, you'll see how the edges, the lateral edges are coming, and they eventually pinch off, forming this neural tube. So we have neural plate, neural fold, neural tube. Simple. This blue at the end, that were the lateral edges of the neural plate, those are your um, uh, neural crest cells and they differentiate as the folding occurs and they'll go off and become the peripheral nervous system and we'll discuss that another day. Let's just stick to central nervous system. So if you want to understand more what's going on, let's have a look at this one right here. This is the dorsal view of the embryo. Whereas this one is a cross-section or a transverse view, we have the dorsal view. So this is sort of looking, cutting it and then looking up, or this one is looking at it from the back. So if I was the, if I was the embryo, you'd be looking at it this way. So you're looking at it from the back. So we have here the neural tube, and it hasn't been fully developed yet. And if we take, there's another snapshot in time a bit further down, you'll notice that the folding has happened, but the both ends of it are still open. So the top end of the neural tube, that open end, that's called the anterior neuropore, and the bottom end is called the posterior neuropore. Now why is it important for us to know this? Because failures or defects, uh, failures of the neuro anterior neuropore to close, for example, will lead to something like anencephaly, upper neural tube defects and failure in the posterior neuropore to close will cause things like spinal bifida or other lower neural tube defects. So the anterior neuropore should ideally close by day 25 and the posterior neuropore should ideally close by day 27. So just to get a better uh, understanding of what you're looking at right here, in blue we have the, the neural tube your central nervous system. In red, we have the mesoderm, the somites. These ones will become your muscles. But right now, although I've done it in red, 
it's not on top, it's still underneath the uh, ectoderm or the new, uh, and alongside the neural plate. So if you're looking at this, just picture this coming up like that. So this is a cross section like this. So this cross section of this, just to keep it so simple and you'll understand everything. So if we're going to look at the top part, the cephalic part of the central nervous system, of the neural tube, we'll have it right here. So the inner embryological development of the brain will have three main parts. The prosencephalon, the mesencephalon, and the rhombencephalon. Just keep it really simple. Prosencephalon, forebrain. Mesencephalon, midbrain. Rhombencephalon, hindbrain. And with further development, you'll have them uh, differentiating into further sections of the brain. So, the prosencephalon will differentiate into the telencephalon, which is right here, and the diencephalon, right here. So, what, what, what am I talking about right now? So, the telencephalon, that'll become your cerebral hemispheres, so the cerebral cortex, for example. The diencephalon, that'll become your thalamus, hypothalamus, epithalamus. And that is your prosencephalon. That is your forebrain. Keep it that simple. Prosencephalon becomes telencephalon, which is the cerebral cortex, and the diencephalon, which is the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. So moving on, we have the mesencephalon, which doesn't differentiate into any other different structures. It just becomes the midbrain. So it was the mesencephalon, and it still is the mesencephalon, and that will become your midbrain. And now if we focus our attention on the rhombencephalon, your hindbrain, that'll differentiate into two more parts. The first one being the metencephalon, the metencephalon, and the myencephalon. So the metencephalon will become the pons and the cerebellum, and the myencephalon, that'll become the medulla oblongata. And of course, we have the bottom here, which is the spinal cord. Also, another thing I'd like to talk about is even in this primitive structure, you, the lumen of the uh, neural tube, or what we have right here, that is going to be the future ventricles. So the top part over here, the telencephalon, between this, uh, the future cerebral hemispheres, we'll have the lateral ventricles, and they're connected by the... They're connected to the third ventricle by the interventricular foramen. So the uh, third ventricle is in the diencephalon, and then we have in the mesencephalon the uh, cerebral aqueduct, which connects the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle in the myencephalon. So, and the, the cerebral aqueduct is also known as the aqueduct of Sylvius. And also, of course, the lumen remains open in a normal spinal cord development, and the spinal cord will be filled with cerebral, uh, uh, cerebral spinal fluid as well. So, now, if this was the cross-section, if, if this was the cross-sectional view, and this was the dorsal view from the back, this would be the side view. So, if, so this one right here, you're looking at it like this. So, this is this. And now this, you're looking at it like this, looking at it side on. Okay, so let's go through it again so that you can understand it from another angle. Early on, we have the three sections. Prosencephalon, mesencephalon, rhombencephalon. Let's keep it that simple. Three parts. Forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain. That simple. As time goes on, you'll have further development from those three parts into... The, for example, the prosencephalon becoming the telencephalon and the diencephalon, the mesencephalon remaining the mesencephalon, and the rhombencephalon becoming the metencephalon and the myencephalon. And you can tell from the different dilatations of its development that it will look like its future adult structure. So, paying attention to over here, by week four we'll have a brain that looks something like this. Okay? We'll have the optic vesicle there. And looking at this one right here, that's by day, uh, sorry, week six. 
And the reason I'd like to focus on this a little bit is because I want to talk about the cranial nerves. It's very important in the development of the central nervous system to eventually also have a discussion of the cranial nerve. So from the telencephalon, we have the olfactory nerve. Now the olfactory nerve is a sensory nerve, sense of smell. Uh, cranial nerve number two, that's the optic nerve for sight, and that's in the diencephalon. Cranial nerve number three and four from the mesencephalon, they are innervating the muscles of the eye, so their motor uh, cranial nerve. So the third, or the ocular motor nerve, that does most of the muscles of the eye. The trochlear nerve does the superior oblique muscle of the eye. And if we go move along to the metencephalon, we'll have the trigeminal, which has three other nerves. The first one, so from the trigeminal, we have the ophthalmic, maxillary, and the uh, mandibular nerve. Now the abdic abdicans nerve come from the posterior part of the metencephalon and that will innervate the lateral rectus, it's another eye muscle. And then of course we have the facial nerve, the vestibular cochlear nerve. Vestibular cochlear will become the vestibular and the cochlear nerve, so for both hearing and for balance. And then we have the glossopharyngeal nerve, which goes to your throat, can help you, will help innervate swallowing and some of your tongue, and then the vagus nerve, which will become very important for parasympathetic activity, the accessory nerve, and finally the hypoglossal nerve. Now those are your cranial nerves, and it's important to understand from which part of the embryo they develop from, because they will eventually become, accordingly to your uh, student, to the adult structures. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. I've kept it very simple. Hopefully you understand the basics of how the central nervous system uh, develops. Thanks for watching.